Okay, so here's my thought for the day. I do believe that every narcissistic relationship is a threesome. You might be like, Dr. Romani, say what? And before we get to that point and the why and the what of that, please do subscribe. If you do end up liking this video, please drop a comment or say hello or give a thumbs up because we'd love to hear from you because well, this is a bit of a saucy topic, right? So you're thinking, really, Dr. Romani, every narcissistic relationship is a threesome? What do you mean by that? Well, it's true. And it's all about the triangulation. Triangulation isn't just about gossip and people turning people against other people. It goes a bit deeper than that. Now, by now, if you've been watching this channel, reading everything you've read about narcissism, you already know what the narcissistic relationship cycle is. You probably know it better than an expert does at this point, right? Love bomb, devalue, discard, hoover, rinse, lather, repeat. We know the cycle. However, I got to tell you, just about every narcissistic relationship I've ever heard about seems to have a third or a fourth or a fifth person in it. You might be thinking, what are you talking about? Why is that? It's all about triangulation. So we, you know this, we've talked about this. Triangulation is a way for the narcissist to maintain a sense of power and domination and something we have talked about a lot on this channel. There are different ways this sort of non-consensual threesomeness can go down. So let me give you some examples so you know what I mean about the sort of threesomey nature of all narcissistic relationships. You're in an intimate relationship with someone or you know, romantic relationship, and they're st always staring at other people or noticing other people, not in a subtle way, in a sort of rude and obvious way when they are in your presence. Or mentioning people, oh, I don't know, people they know, people they've met at work, or people from other contexts in their life repeatedly, usually in how much like, oh, that other person's so smart or um, so fun, or um, ooh, they talk about what they're wearing and how much they admire each other. And they talk about them just enough that you wonder if something inappropriate is happening between your partner and that person that they're always mentioning. Or your, your partner talks about their far, former partners and ex-partners and ex-girlfriends a bit too much. Or your partner compares you a lot to other people. Initially, this may seem like passing comments, but as you enter the devalue and then into definitely into the discard cycle, it becomes downright mean. Saying things like, well, why can't you make as much money as such and such? Or my brother's wife managed to get the baby weight off. Like really kinds of mean compare -y things. Or having strange boundaries with family or friends. And these folks, these sort of people, these families, these friends, who are often their, the narcissist's enablers or their supply, can often become a constant presence sort of in your relationship. And they're there to constantly prop up the narcissist, which then gives the narcissist even more power and leaves you more isolated. Or kind of shady, uncomfortable social media behavior, like your partner liking inappropriate photos posted by other people or DMing or seeming to have rather emotionally in, intimate and inappropriate relationships with people in that space, which feels disrespectful to you. Or they're constantly flirting. They tend to flirt with restaurant servers, store clerks, bartenders, reception staff. And if you point it out, they tell you that you're too sensitive. Or they tell you about these things that happened in their day-to-day -day lives that give them supply. And they do that a lot, not just once. So they'll come home and say things like, oh, someone asked me for my number today, or a person in the grocery store wanted to know if I was single and they thought I was hot. Or remember that guy that we were talking to at the gym? Well, he told me that you better treat me good because he would be ready to sweep, swoop in because you're so lucky to have me. It's always like this kind of like, why are you always talking about these other people? Now, keep in mind for this to be a thing, there needs to be sort of a plausible element to all of this. Obviously, if the person being hit on is laughing about the one time this happened in the last 10 years and is sharing it, I don't know, in silly jest, like, yo, I went to the grocery store in my pajamas last night 
and someone told me I was pretty and you both laugh about it. I'm not talking about those stories. I'm saying time after time after time, they're talking about how everybody is hitting on them, right? We're talking about that narcissistic person who's going out into the world looking for validation and they're definitely getting it and they feel the need to share it with you as their partner. Listen, if you can think of other examples where narcissistic people always seem to bring other people into your relationship and other examples where you felt like in your relationship, you almost had to keep making space for another person, please drop it in the comments. I'm just giving a short list. It'll be interesting to see what other people's um, what other people's stories are like. So you might be thinking then what the hell is all this three summy triangulation about? Well, it's a few things. It's the narcissist sort of saying to you, Hey, you better watch out because other people notice me. And basically I could get new supply without saying that out loud. It's just the narcissist almost kind of putting you on edge. And I really do believe it's a projection of how they always feel on edge and how they fear rejection and fear abandonment. It relates to their impulsivity and their poor boundaries. It relates to their entitlement. They believe truly that they can do, I, they walk around saying, I can do what I want, I can say what I want, and I don't really care who it affects. It's a way to keep you in your place in the relationship, again, by keeping you on watch. Basically, the message is you better not fall out of line because your replacement is right around the corner. At least that's, that's sort of um, insinuated. It's about maintaining control through humiliation, which can then lead to self-devaluation in the person in the relationship. It, all of this also fosters a bigger buy-in for you in the relationship. It strengthens the cognitive dissonance. Because let's face it, we as people, we instinctively want something more if we suspect someone else wants it. Come on, how often have you purchased some piece of junk that you didn't need because it was the last one that was available or they were selling out, right? It gives the narcissist power because it plays on your insecurity, because we all have insecurity about this, of being compared to someone else. And after about probably three months in a narcissistic relationship, most people feel like they are not enough. The triangulation can also take another interesting path. It's about them being suspicious of your fidelity narcissistic people pretty much as a rule are really jealous, but it can almost feel like a paranoid, almost delusional jealousy. It's not uncommon for them to accuse you of talking to a person, I don't know, at the hardware store or the grocery store too long. That, why were you making eyes at the guy at the grocery store, right? They'll wonder why you were home late from work when you already told them that it was a big deadline and you were calling them from the office and calling them on the way home. They will keep asking you questions about, I don't know, a colleague or someone that you have not yet mentioned. Just thinking that there's someone new that you're friends with. They will compare themselves to your ex-partner or partners, even when you're not at all comparing them to the ex. It's not passing conversation. It's as though the narcissist assumes that you are the one who's unfaithful, that you're the one who's triangulating, that you are the one thinking about someone else. They'll even go weird with this. Like they'll see like a family member of yours, an attractive family member on your Instagram feed that is somehow like a sibling to you and is somehow a threat to you. All of this is a mixed up manifestation, obviously, of their own insecurity and their projection of probably some of their bad deeds, their need to think that they're in a fight with someone else over you. Otherwise, the relationship isn't as interesting and as well as the suspiciousness that often characterizes narcissism. So although you are completely committed and faithful to your relationship, you may constantly have accusations thrown at you that you're not or that there's something sort of dodgy about your behavior. And in a way, the, and this is where it gets really dicey, narcissists almost seem to be more interested in you and simultaneously enraged at you if they perceive that there's some third persons or third parties kind of flirting with you or you're flirting with them. Lots of people will feel that the narcissistic person is more interested in them when they suspect, when the narcissist suspects that someone else is interested in you. Like I said, these relationships are always sort of a threesome. 
Now, as we know, infidelity is the narcissist ground game. And I am sorry, but I really struggle with this concept of the healthy parts of infidelity, like this idea that infidelity can make a relationship stronger. I've been a therapist for a really long time, and I have worked with many clients who have experienced or have engaged in infidelity. I have no judgment about it, but I got to tell you, I have no, I've never seen one of those relationships become stronger ever. I have seen hurt. I've seen betrayal. I've seen it result in self-doubt and anxiety and anger, but never growth. Now, narcissistic folks need validation. They're entitled. They lack empathy. They're impulsive. And all of this is a recipe for relationship betrayal. Infidelity is the most obvious form of triangulation in a relationship. The narcissistic person gets a perverse sort of power from it, a sort of spoiled child getting away with something. But the stakes, which are often another person's mental health, don't even register for the narcissist. And again, there's that lack of empathy, which is often playing a role here. But this sort of triangulated nature of all narcissistic relationships is often a theme that may have dogged you from early in your life. Narcissistic parents often compare siblings to each other or even may imply that other children that you're not even related to are better than you. Oh, she's so much nicer to her mother. He does so much better in school or whatever. There's always someone else with a narcissist. One relationship with one person just doesn't work for them. So yes, if you are in a narcissistic relationship, whether in how they talk about people or whether there actually is, it always feels like there's someone else in the relationship with you. Like I said, it's always a threesome. Maybe not literally, but the third parties are always lingering out there somewhere, whether you're being compared to them, whether they're being stared or flirted with, whether they're actually in a relationship with them. And that may not be what you signed up for. Listen, there are people out there who prefer three people in a relationship. And that's fine. I mean, I think people need to do what works for them as long as everyone in that relationship is consenting and comfortable. But modally, most people are dyadic, two people in a relationship, and believe that when they enter into an intimate relationship with someone, that it is a two-person show. Triangulated relationships always leave people off balance for all of the reasons that I have shared. When you're in a narcissistic relationship and you're in the fading days of the love bombing phase, that idea that someone else could get the intensity that you just got can lead you to really fight for the relationship despite the red flags you're experiencing. You don't want someone else to have that excitement. Or you may feel like you are living in an alternate universe where a narcissistic partner chronically assumes that you are unfaithful, even when you're not, and you spend much of your time reassuring the partner and living a more and more isolated life so as to not set off the narcissistic partner. Or you find yourself, if you're in a narcissistic relationship, wondering, after a lot, a lot, a lot of shady behavior from a partner, if that business trip that your partner is taking again, it's really a business trip. Or you feel constantly like you aren't measuring up to these other people that are in the narcissist's life, mostly because they compare you to them and leave you feeling like you're not. Because like I said, just about every narcissistic relationship is a threesome that you didn't agree to. It means, it means that people in these relationships end up expending a lot of bandwidth ruminating and wondering and worrying and more than anything else, feeling not enough. It's not what you signed up for. I don't think it's what anyone signs up for, and it's exhausting. If you are in a narcissistic relationship, in addition to the narcissistic abuse and all that goes along with it, that third person or more in the relationship, you did not bargain for them either, and that's also tiresome. So, let me know what your thoughts are about whether you think narcissistic relationships, all narcissistic relationships are threesomes or foursomes or five sums. 
what are the kinds of experiences of comparative triangulation you have gone through? We'd love to hear more. And if you like this video and you like this channel, please subscribe, hit that bell, get notifications, and like it if, it, if you enjoyed this. Thanks again.